Good morning. Hi. Beginning Tuesday, December 1st, in partnership with Publix, the city will be distributing $250 gift cards for residents to use at their discretion for groceries in the city. This morning, you can visit the website at miamigov.com backslash grocery, miamigov.com backslash grocery. Additionally, if it is easier for any of our residents, you can also call our office at 305-250-5300, 305-250-5300 to leave your information and we will try to accommodate you. Through this program, we're gonna be able to help roughly 14,000 City of Miami families. The only requirement is that you live in the City of Miami and that you sign an affidavit indicating that you've suffered a loss of income during COVID-19. No one will ask you for any additional information and a notary is not required. This is all possible as we announced last week because the City of Miami received a portion of the CARES Act funding from Miami-Dade County. And as I promised you, in all those months, when we were fighting for that money, we would get it on the street right away. We'd get it to work right away. And that's why we were hoping to get more and more of it sooner. Uh, but as you can see, we've delivered on our promise and we're getting that money to work right away. We only had a month and a half to spend it. Uh, so we're spending it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The December 1st, 2020 event will be right here at Regatta Park which is at 3500 Pan American Drive. On December 8th, we're gonna be having one in Little Haiti Soccer Park, which is at 6301 Northeast 2nd Avenue. On December 15th, we're having one at Juan Pablo Duarte Park, which is at 1776 Northwest 28th Street. On December 22nd, we're having one at Jose Marti Park, which is located at 362 Southwest 4th Street. And on December 29th, we're having one at West End Park, which is located at 6030 Southwest 2nd Street. So we're doing it in a cross section of the city. We're trying to uh, do it in as many places as possible so that it can be easy for uh, residents to get to different parts. Again, we're asking them to please download the affidavit online at miamigov backslash grocery and have it filled out so that it makes it easier. The more work that our residents do before, the faster that we can uh, give out the gift cards efficiently. Voy a decir en español. A partir de martes de hoy, perdón. A partir del martes primero de diciembre, vamos a estar con, eh, colaborando con Publix para distribuir eh, gift cards de 250 dólares para los residentes de la ciudad de Miami. Van a haber cinco distintos eventos en cual lo vamos a distribuir y solamente los residentes tienen que ser miembros de la ciudad de Miami, eh, residentes de la ciudad de Miami y tienen que firmar un documento legal que se va a poder encontrar en una página de web miamigov.com backslash it's not on here groceries backslash groceries sorry eh, it's in, it's in, in, uh, y ahí por favor lo que le estamos pidiendo a los residentes nuestros que por favor sacan las planillas llenan las planillas antes de ir El, el día del evento para hacerlo mucho más fácil. Vamos a poder ayudar con el favor de Dios aproximadamente 14,000 familias en nuestra comunidad y van a haber cinco eventos distintos en diferentes partes de la ciudad en cual la gente puede llevar eh, su documento legal, su affidavit y pueden recibir uno de los gift cards de 250 dólares. El primero va a estar el primer, el primer día de diciembre aquí mismo en, regata, en el parque de regata que está al lado del ayuntamiento El próximo va a estar el 8 de diciembre en el par, eh, parque de, de, de soccer de Little Haiti. Y eso está situado en el 6301 North, North, Oeste, Noreste, Segunda Avenida. El tercer evento va a ser el 15 de diciembre en Juan Pablo Duarte Park, que es 1776-1776 Noroeste, 28 calles. 
El próximo va a estar el 22 de diciembre en José Martí Parque, 362 South Oeste, Suroeste, 4 calles. Y el último va a ser el 29 de diciembre en el Parque de West End, que está situado en el 6030 Southwest, segundo calle. Esto fue posible por la contribución que recibimos del condado. Ustedes se recuerdan, desde el primer momento yo estaba pidiendo estos fondos y yo siempre me comprometí a utilizar los fondos lo más rápido posible porque la necesidad es grande. Y si hubiéramos recibido lo que hubiéramos podido, eh, lo, que, lo, que, lo que nos debería, hubiéramos podido hacer mucho más eh, para nuestra comunidad. Pero estamos utilizando los fondos inmediatamente porque tenemos una fecha de vencimiento de gasto de los fondos el 31 de diciembre así que eh, por eso estamos eh, anunciando esto hoy estamos muy agradecidos eh, por su colaboración en dejarnos eh, presentar esta información porque hemos recibido muchas llamadas y muchos eh, mensajes en redes sociales de personas que querían los detalles de este programa y cómo íbamos a gastar estos fondos questions in English and Spanish Yeah, so it, you remember that it's not going to be just in those five events. So th those five events are for, for the cards that week that I control, but also the districts are also separating them. I understand that District 4 had one yesterday, so there's going to be other ones that are going to be done by the district. These are just the ones that are allocated for citywide. We could expect more than that or less. It depends on, on, on who shows up. Obviously, what we've seen from our food distributions is hundreds, if not thousands of people. So we will have adequate uh, policing to make sure that we're able to, to manage the flow of people. Oh, my God. So the first one is the the governor's order did three things essentially one is it it disconnected the fines from the mask in terms of our inability to find people during an executive order period which we're in right now so essentially right now we wouldn't be able to find someone for not wearing a mask uh, the county tried to get around that by saying well we can find people now but they won't have to pay it until some later date and i just feel like that's that's not something that's been very effective Uh, Miami Beach is doing that now, and so we're going to wait to see what success Miami Beach has, and maybe we'll go back to something like that. The second thing that they did was um, they opened all businesses, which meant they opened up bars and nightclubs. Um, that was something that we were heading towards, but we were doing it on a very methodical basis, on a two-week-by-two-week -two -week basis, understanding that when he issued his order, there was basically a perfect storm because he opened up all those businesses, increased the capacity, which is the third thing, And then there was also uh, the schools opened. So you had all these things happening exactly at the same time. And that's not what any of our experts recommended. They recommended that we do it on a two week by two week basis methodically. The third thing was the increase of capacity. So essentially, um, the, you cannot go below 50% capacity under any circumstance. And if, and if uh, they can social distance, they can go up to 100% capacity. So that I think, Uh, and I think, I think just a general sentiment, when you, when, you, when you put in an order, and I think this is something we've seen, that there's a psychology to this. When you put in an order that liberates things, there's a tendency to go completely in another direction. So one of the things we're doing is we are focusing on enforcement this week. So this week I know for a fact we shut down at least one business, and I know our enforcement team has been out again. So that's something that we're going to see happening more and more. And we're collaborating with the county and with other cities. 
as well. In terms of your second question, what, what we're trying to do right now is collaborate among elected officials. So we have a meeting either today or Monday with the League of Cities um, and with all the mayors, and we're trying to create a coalition that I think if, if maybe I can't get the governor's attention, maybe that coalition can get the governor's attention. And, uh, and we're hoping that that empowers me to be able to, to, to do that. Um, we have not yet looked at what potential uh, you know, legal avenues do we have directly. Um, and so that's something that we also have as, as a possibility. Let me, let me go to Adriana. Yeah. Go to, yeah. Sí. Sí. sí, eso lo hemos visto en algunas ocasiones con respecto a, a los carros que vienen en, lo, en las líneas de distribución, que son carros de lujo, obviamente. Es muy difícil eh, eh, crear ese tipo de, de, de requisito, pero es algo que podemos examinar. Sí. Van a estar, eh, le, le, vamos a tener un notario eh, disponible para, para los documentos. Sure. El, el fondo total es 3.5 millones de dólares. Eh, el, el, la razón por la cual Publix es porque nosotros podemos, en cierto sentido, controlar los gastos y, y pueden asegurar que los gastos se van a utilizar para algo que, que es, es positivo eh, y, y por eso lo hicimos de esa forma. ¿Y por qué esta cadena específica de... No, no sé, no sé. I don't know why. Fa facilidad, era fa fácil. Yes, that's all CARES Act money, yeah. No, I think I just think uh, I, it was, that was her question in Spanish. I, I think it was just ease of convenience. I mean, we have to get this money out as quickly as possible. We don't have that much time, so we just wanted to buy something in bulk that we can get out as quickly as possible. Yo creo que I'll say it in Spanish. Yo creo que la razón por cual escogieron Publix es porque teníamos que hacerlo rápidamente y queríamos eh, comprar algo que podíamos distribuir fácilmente. Sure. Sure. The transmitters. Yeah. Yeah, and I can tell you from my call from the with the coronavirus task force yesterday that they're incredibly concerned with the number of workers at uh, long-term healthcare facilities that are getting infected. I think, I think they cited a statistic of 37% of long-term health care facilities had a, a, an employee or a member of their facility infected. And I think it was 20% or 17% of the patients. So they're, they're seeing that, that uptick, and it's very worrisome to them because that's obviously one of the major drivers of mortality, right? Because we know that uh, you know, mortality is much, much greater uh, in, in elderly than it is in, in the general population. So that is definitely a concern. Sure. Uh, it doesn't sound like it to me. Uh, obviously, the, the vaccine program is going to be an enormous uh, rollout. I did speak to the coronavirus task force about it as well. And one of the things that they told me was, do not rely on the vaccine to get you through this wave. That's not going to happen. So that to me was very important because any thought of, hey, we don't need to implement mitigation uh, factors is, 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 is not something that they recommend. They recommend that we have the ability to mitigate 
And they also stressed very, very much in the call that wearing a mask in public with the fines associated with it is the best mitigation tool that we have. That's why I'm pushing so hard for it. You did mention uh, uh, with respect to uh, a building, uh, a business was closed. Yeah. And, and uh, maybe it looked to Miami Beach's need as far as how the mask enforcement goes over there. Yes. And, and so, um, what business closed, sir? Also- I'll find out for you. I'll text you, Steve. Right. I know at least one, maybe more. Right. But I can tell you one as of the day before yesterday. When we started, we started on Wednesday. I'm sorry, we started, today is Wednesday, right? So we started on Monday, or Wednesday of last week. Yeah, so so nobody has been enforcing the mask, essentially, since the governor's order, because the governor's order disassociates the fine. So it's like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna tell you, you should be wearing a mask, but I can't find you. What Miami Beach is trying to do now is go under sort of a county uh, theory, which is that we can find people, but you can't collect the fine until after the executive orders run out, which could be months from now or whatever. So we're going to see how they do it, see if it's effective. And if it's effective, maybe we'll, we'll consider doing that as well. Anything else, guys? Thank you so much for getting the information out on the press conference. Really appreciate it on the, uh, on the distributions. Thank you. Yep. 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 Absolutely. If, if, if the food distributions are any indication, sometimes you see cars that make you sort of wince, you know, about the fact that we're kind of going on an honor system. If somebody lives in the city, a city is a very poor city. So by and large, I think people who are uh, impoverished are the ones that should be taking advantage of this. And my hope is that we're only going to be able to help 14,000 people out of a large city. So I'm, my, I'm hoping that people... Are, are you know conscientious of that? And I'm sorry to jump right. Just one no, no, go ahead. They should be. And, and, and however, it's healthcare workers along with veteran care facilities, which are actually the top priority. Yeah. And so, can you talk to the police and firefighters out there? And- I, I can tell you that after healthcare workers in the contract tracing that we've looked at from the Department of Health. There's two categories that are the top categories of people that get sick. The first is healthcare workers. The second one is what they call protective services, which is basically our first responders. So there's no doubt that they should be first. Um, in the case of healthcare workers, they're interacting with, um, you know, with the public, but they also could be interacting in, in, in uh, nursing home facilities with the most vulnerable population. So they have to go first. Um, in terms of our first responders, they're, they're responding to everyday calls from the public. And uh, we've tried to do a very good job of isolating people who are, are feeling sick, getting them tested, and, and, and having all kinds of isolation protocols. But, you know, it, it, it'd it be great if they were inoculated quicker. See? Sí, como no. Lo que hemos visto en estas distribuciones de comida que una vez da asco. El hecho de que tú ves carros de lujo que están eh, que están cogiendo bienes eh, para personas eh, que tienen mucha necesidad. Y nosotros somos una ciudad pobre, así que yo, yo le pido a los residentes de nuestra ciudad que, que tomen eso en, en, en mente cuando ellos deciden si ellos van a venir a participar en un evento como esto. Solo vamos a tener 14 mil eh, eh, tarjetas de, 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 de distribución y hay cientos de miles de personas que tienen eh, necesidad en nuestra ciudad. Gracias. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I'm getting calls from mayors across the country. I mean, it's not just Miami. People are very, very concerned. Uh, obviously, having that call yesterday with the Coronavirus Task Force, they're very concerned. Um, and, and they also, by the way, have expressed it to the governor. They have expressed their concerns to the governor in terms of uh, and support our efforts to, uh, to have more mitigation of factors. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Likewise. Great job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Gracias. Hasta luego.